If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. So, yeah. Hi everyone, uh, myself uh, Akshay. I have uh, just a quick uh, intro about me. So, I have overall uh, uh, 18 years of experience in uh, SAP in different areas like in technical and uh, techno functional as an architect. Uh, uh, okay, and uh, I'm working in MDG space from last uh, uh, seven years onwards. Okay, so as I was part of this uh, MDG uh, product development initially then move to uh, on the consulting side where I was uh, working as an architect for the uh, project MDG implementations. So I played multiple roles in MDG. I had exposure working on multiple master data in uh, uh, implementing in MDG. That's a quick intro. So, okay. So the other uh, thing is I just wanted to check. Uh, I hope you all are from SAP background. Does anyone from this group uh, from non SAP background? Today we are going to discuss in MDG space uh, uh, about the uh, MDG basics overview and also the architecture, the technical architecture of uh, MDG. OK, so yeah, before getting into that uh, topic, uh, so if can someone brief based on your understanding that you already had uh, experience in MDG, so what is this MDG is for? The centralized master data system. Mm, okay, centralized master data system, good. And uh, okay, so how it is different uh, creating a master data, let's take example of material. So how it is different uh, creating a material in normal uh, uh, traditional way uh, using your MM01 transaction versus uh, creating the same material using MDG. So do you notice any differences? Why we need this? So, so one thing actually like, you know, which uh, really distinguishes is like, you know, the governance in MDG, like, you know, mm -hmm. goes through multiple levels of approval before getting created in the system. So unlike yes. the traditional ECC does not have that governance. Yes, that's a good point. And can anyone add any other additional points? Okay, that's fine. No issues. That is what uh, we are going to uh, learn in this uh, entire uh, course. Okay, so yeah, let me explain uh, at very high level uh, what is MDG and what exactly we are doing in MDG. Okay, so I hope you all can see my screen, right? Yes, yes. Okay, great. So assume that this is your SAP system. SAP system. Okay. So first thing is what is a master data? So this MDG stands for master data governance. That means you wanted to govern your master data. Okay. So what is master data? And uh, apart from master data, you also have something called transactional data. OK, so. Can someone tell the difference between master data versus uh, transactional data? A data oh. that uh, quite changes is a transactional data like maybe. And master data is a standard like customer member vendors. Yeah, that's true. Exactly. OK, so. Master data means you create the master data uh, uh, once. That means, let's say, for example, you have a material. Uh, assume that you have a laptop, a laptop with uh, some model. Let's say, for example, X15001 is a model, your laptop model. So this is a master data, your laptop. OK, you create it once, this master data, and uh, uh, and uh, in the as part of the transactional data, what you do, let's say, for example, you wanted to sell this laptop to different customers. So you create a sales orders or you wanted to procure these laptops. You create a purchase orders or else uh, for you wanted to pay that uh, or uh, uh, payments for this uh, one. So you'll create some invoices. OK, so these are the transactional data. So you create a sales order when you are selling your uh, 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 material to someone as customer A. 
and again you create another sales order to sell the same material to some other customer so likewise you will create multiple uh, sales orders so transactional data is like uh, the life span of this particular transactional data is very short short in the sense once you create your quotation or order and once the payment is done uh, and once the payment is done then what happens is that lifespan of that particular uh, uh, transactional data is completed then again you may create another sales order and uh, once the payment is done or the goods is received you will close that one so likewise the uh, the lifespan of your transactional data is uh, a very short whereas uh, your master data once you create this a particular material in your system you will be using it uh, for a uh, uh, longer duration and the changes to this particular master data also uh, uh, will, will very very rarely you will be uh, doing some changes to this particular master data okay so master data will be created once and used in multiple times transactional data will be uh, uh, it will create and it will uh, once the required thing is done so that uh, that uh, particular order or that record will be closed okay so that is the difference between master data and transactional data okay in uh, sap terminology what could be the master data okay so uh, we discussed about sales orders purchase orders invoice some goods movement documents or any uh, anything like a, 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 a your uh, make to orders so there are multiple uh, in sdmm or in any uh, finance so you will see lot of uh, transactional documents that will be creating uh, in day in day out okay but uh, when it comes to master data uh, what are the kind of master data that we can think of like your material master material master is one master data like you will be creating the materials using material master okay so then you also have customers customers is one master data vendor is also another master data okay so then uh, uh, you will have something like uh, uh, cost centers profit centers gl accounts okay so then you will have uh, 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 what else you can think of articles articles you will also have equipments functional locations so these are the different uh, master data which we create in different modules in sap people who are working on sd or mm they will be majorly working on material master customer master vendor master if someone is working on finance space and sap finance they will be mostly dealing with cost centers profit centers gl accounts if someone is working on retail space they will be dealing with article master and if someone is working on plant maintenance module in sap there you have equipment functional location bombs all these are different master data okay so these are the different type of master data on the right hand side you will have that uh, multiple uh, uh, transactional uh, uh, data so this particular mdg module uh, topic deals with master data it it least bothered about your transactional uh, data okay so how do we create a master data earlier in traditional way so you go to mm01 transaction or 02 or 03 or you have something like a zero let's say for example mmx x means uh, it can be 0 1 2 3 or 5 or 6 or there are multiple transactions are there so all this using all these transactions either you can create material you can create a material or you can update material or you can actually uh, uh, mark for delete materials so likewise basically you can perform certain operations on your material master using this particular transactions so sap dedicatedly provided these transactions to create or update uh, uh, your materials okay so then again if you go to uh, customer or vendor master or business partners so in this case we will be uh, there are B, bp is a tico to create or update the business partners xk01 is for creation of vendors okay similarly you have vd01 so likewise there are different transaction codes are there using which again you will modify or you can create or update this master data so likewise there are dedicated transaction codes are available in your sap ecc using which you can actually 
create or update the master data. This is the story before MDG. Okay, without MDG, you can directly log into your uh, uh, SAP system. Okay, so I'll go to MM01 transaction code. And here I can uh, create a material. This is for material creation process. Okay, so likewise, if you go to XK01, you can go ahead and uh, create a supplier uh, using this particular transaction. So, likewise, you have uh, uh, multiple uh, different T codes, dedicated T codes using which you can create the master data. This is going fine. Now, what uh, MDG will do is let's say, for example, this is your SAP system. Now, this is your uh, SAP ECC component where you have the respective transaction codes MM01, or else uh, XK01, or else you have BPT code. Okay, so likewise, you have different T codes. Once you using this particular transaction codes, once you create the master data, this in the back end you have the database. So this data will get stored into your respect those respective tables. You go ahead and create a material and click the save button. The data gets stored into this the underlying uh, tables. Those tables are nothing but your uh, like uh, Mara, Marci. These are the table names. Okay, so so you have your SAP tables. The data gets stored into your uh, the respective tables. So that is something like this. If you go to MM01 transaction, okay, select your uh, let's say for example material type. Uh, FERT. I'm going to create a material. Okay. So I'll enter test material, material description. This unit of measure. Each. OK, so let me save this material. So if I hit this save button, that this particular material will get created in the backend database table. Okay, so material 2824 got created. So if I go to Mara table, I can query with this particular material number. Okay, so this is how you create a master data without MDG. Now, what happened is with as part of this MDG, MDG is a add on component. Like you need to install this uh, additional component in your uh, SAP, existing SAP system so that MDG related functionalities will get enabled. So assume that this is your add-on component. Okay, so if you are now what uh, as part of this MDG, what we do is basically instead of creating the master data using the respect to transaction codes in MDG also you have certain uh, uh, UI applications where you can actually create the master data. The way how you are creating using the respect to transaction codes, the same way you can create either materials, customers, or vendors in this particular MDG layer. So once you create this particular master data in MDG, the data once uh, uh, it has certain processes and uh, once the data gets uh, uh, reviewed and everything, finally the same data get, gets loaded into your underlying the same tables. Okay, instead of creating from here, we are creating the master data using this MDG layer. Now, what is the difference? This particular terminology, this governance, you can see master data governance. This brings a lot of uh, 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 functionalities or features in your MDG layer. While creating the master data, this particular as part of the governance, we will be adding a lot of uh, features for your master data before this data gets created into your underlying database tables. OK, so now what the features that we are going to bring? What is this governance process? 
okay so what processes we enable while creating or updating the master data all those things we will be discussing as part of this particular course okay just to visualize the difference so instead of ecc layer we are enabling mdg component on top of your existing uh, system and there we are creating the master data and the data will be flown back to your underlying the same table same set of tables over here okay so now uh, any questions i take a pause here uh, if you have any questions okay fine then so let's move on now let's no, no, actually, actually this is actually yeah. i have one query sure See, whenever we create a master data in the MDG layer, does the data automatically replicate it into uh, backend ERP tables or does it require any specific mechanism to replicate the data into backend ERP yeah, tables? Yeah, uh, uh, it's a uh, two folded. So in some cases, uh, it automatically uh, flows to your uh, the underlying uh, tables. And in some cases, we need an explicit configuration. Okay, okay. we will discuss that. Okay, thanks, Akshay. Yeah. So now let's go back to. OK, so we have all these uh, different today. We are going to discuss uh, this particular uh, basics for your architecture. And after that, uh, we have uh, uh, that these topics are uh, uh, prepared in a sequential manner one after other. OK, so we will go through each and every topic. So the question that you asked just now that falls under this particular topic data replication framework. OK, we will discuss this. Now, OK, so uh, let's uh, what is MDG? So we just discussed uh, uh, the at very high level. So master MDG is a kind of out of box solution from uh, uh, SAP where you can actually have uh, uh, the domain specific uh, uh, the features domain specific features means. So here. This particular MDG is designed for certain uh, master data objects when i say master data objects like material master business partners which includes your customers vendors then uh, you have something called fi your finance objects this includes your cost center profit center gl account then whatever the company code so all there are multiple sub objects are there under finance okay and similarly there is a uh, uh, article master which will be used in is retail space there is again uh, in the plant maintenance module there are certain master data is available like uh, equipment functional locations then bombs okay so then we have something called task list so likewise you have object links so likewise these are the whatever you can see here this is all these are different master datas different master datas okay so all these master datas you can actually create in MDG. Okay, that means you no need to use the respect to transaction codes in your underlying ECC level. You can in MDG itself. These are the out of box solutions that are already available. All you need to do is you need to just enable those uh, uh, master data so that you can start using those uh, MDG for this creation of this particular master data on top of that one. If any business specific requirements are there, configurations are there as per your governance uh, setup. So those configurations you need to do in MDG layer. Okay. So now what happens is in this one. Okay. So here domain specific uh, out of box and domain specific master data governance means domain specific master data governance means your materials. All these domain specific. Uh, you are uh, uh, in material management material is your uh, master data in uh, SD and MM uh, uh, customer vendor business partners are your master data. So these are the uh, your domain specific master data are already out of box. You don't need to develop anything. You need to just enable those features. So the out of box content will be available on top of that one as per your business needs. You can actually configure or uh, the scenarios or you can add the business rules or governance uh, uh, processes. OK, so that is about uh, domain specific master data governance. OK, and uh, you can actually as part of this MDG, you can create the master data. 
you can update the master data you can extend the master data you can block or unblock you can mark or delete basically you can perform all the operations all the crud operations on your master data and those whatever the changes that you are doing in your master data that changes you can replicate to the or you can distribute to the multiple target systems as well okay so then what happens is in in a, a typical uh, uh, organization right uh, so okay so in general uh, let's say for example if you take any uh, uh, organization that sap landscape assume that uh, you have your uh, uh, sap mdg system okay now you will have another let's say for example multiple uh, systems where this is again another sap one system which you will be using for your sales processes okay you will be having your another sap two system which you will be using for your, all your uh, procurement uh, procurement related stuff and you will also have another sap system for your uh, 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 finance related uh, processings so there might be multiple sap systems you will be having each these systems you will be we call it as a your transactional systems transactional systems in the sense where you will be creating the respect to orders or the transactional documents and everything okay so to create your transactional documents you need material master or maybe business partners or customers or vendors this master data you might need similarly here you might need material master data here you might be needing a business partner data so earlier without mdg you will be creating the respect to master data in the respect to systems and you will be using it now with the introduction of this sap mdg what usually we do the typical landscape is you use you create all your master data centrally in here like that means your material master your business partners your customer master or vendor master all the data you will be creating over here and after that what you do is you can actually once you create this particular master data you can replicate or distribute this particular master data to the respect to target systems so that no need to create the master data again in the respect to target systems centrally you are creating all your master data and distributing the data to the respect to target systems either sap systems or non sap systems as well okay so this is what actually if you have only one single sap system that system itself you will be using for your master data creation as mdg and the same system you will be using for your transactional purposes as well okay so now if you look at this definition so once you create the master data and distribute or consolidate the master data across uh, your complete enterprise landscape okay so you are creating your master data centrally in mdg system and you will be distributing the data to the uh, multiple uh, transactional systems either it can be sap system or uh, uh, non sap system okay so now what is the advantage that i get uh, while creating this uh, master data centrally right so the advantage is basically at a very basic level if you look at this you are create you have one single view of all your master data in one system if at all i need to look at uh, my uh, all the materials active materials or active business partners or customers i no need to look up the individual respective systems because all these systems are getting the data from your mdg system only so if i log into sap system if i can generate a report to see all the existing uh, active materials or partners or customers then it will be easy for me to take some decisions uh, 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 based on the data that i have so you will be having centrally your master data okay so that is one uh, thing and other thing is uh, all the systems are will be in sync in in, in intact basically those are in synchronized mode so uh, you are not going to create duplicate records in different systems let's say for example without mdg i need a material so i'll create the material here and sometimes i might be creating the same material again here also or probably duplicate of the same thing so now here what happens in, we can also avoid the duplicate master data uh, while uh, creation or updating the, so there are multiple advantages are this being uh, Uh, maintaining your master data centrally uh, and make it available to all the required target uh, systems okay so that is the definition of your mdg okay so any questions 
so uh, are you clear i mean uh, or you want me to uh, change anything the speed and everything is that fine okay so as fine you actually know, yeah great thanks for the confirmation okay so now what are the different features of mdg or the functionalities of mdg so now we got the definition what is mdg okay so now what are the different uh, features uh, uh, of uh, mdg okay so first thing is governance as someone mentioned earlier so if you observe that uh, the way that how we are creating your master data earlier okay so assume that this is my sap system where i have the transaction codes mm01 or mm02 okay and other database so once the data gets created the data gets loaded into the respective systems so there is no mdg component here now with the introduction of mdg we are adding or enabling uh, activating a layer over here or sub component this is a mdg component your sap ecc or your s4 is already available over here so the same database you are already having over here okay now instead of creating the master data using my mm01 or mdg uh, specific uh, sorry ecc specific transaction codes users uh, will business users will log into your mdg ui application he will create the master data here okay so once he creates the master data what happens is you have as part of when you are enabling this mdg component we will be having here something called temporary persistent area which we call it as a staging layer staging area staging area staging area is nothing but a group of tables only but uh, 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 so th this is your final table so on the ecc that you have this is your final table we call this as a active area active area Active area is nothing but all your SAP standard tables, your MARA, MARC, MVKE, or uh, your uh, uh, whatever LFA one, LFB one, LFM one, all your customer vendor. So those tables. So all the tables that is there as part of your ECCRS four, those we call it as an active area. So MDG without MDG, also you have these active areas already available over here. Okay, but now what happens is with the uh, and when you are enabling your MDG component, this particular staging content uh, or the group of staging tables will get generated in the system. Okay, so this is also just like your normal SAP table only. You can go to S11 T code and you can look at the table names. Okay, now the what happens is this is your temporary area. So when user creates using MDG your application, when user creates the data master data. First, this data gets loaded into your staging area. Okay, so the record get inserted into staging area, and after that, uh, it will go for some approval process, and in the approval, the requester will create, and it will go to the approval process, and approver will review, and he can further change the data, and finally, uh, approver approves the uh, record. Okay, so once approver approves the record or finalize the record, that is the time this the data from your staging area will be moved to your underlying uh, the active area tables this is the typical process so now wo here what we are doing is we are adding a governance layer when you are activating mdg means you are active you are adding a governance layer governance layer in the sense what happens uh, let's say for example one business user cre initiates the material creation process okay so this the okay so let so requester okay who will actually initiate a master data creation then it will go to the uh, approver plant approver or some approver so he will review the same request so when he initiates this one this time the data is going to store in your staging table and approver will open the same record the staging record only he will open it and he will he can modify the data Again, once you modify the data, the data will again go and update in your staging record. And again, assume that it goes to some steward or some final approver. Okay. So then that time also the steward will read the data from your uh, uh, staging table only. 
and again he will do some corrections this this data will go and update in your staging record so that means when you are add this is what the gov governance means there are too many there are many other features also there at this point of time when you are when someone is governing your master data that means someone you are adding that approver review process to your master data okay so all the changes will be there in your staging record only okay only when this particular the final person he can actually approve or he can reject that request once he approve this request or final approver approves that one that is the time that record will get stored into your active area okay it will move down to your active area tables if this particular person rejects this record that means the record will get deleted from your staging table and it won't move into your underlying active area tables okay so in short the, okay when i say governance means they we, we are adding earlier if you are creating a material using mm01 there is no approval review process once you go log into mm01 enter the data hit save button the data directly gets updated into your mara marci table but with introduction of mdg what happens is we are adding that governance layer so governance layer means we are adding a approval review process and uh, only the authorized persons can log in and they can edit or they can uh, they can uh, uh, approve that request so all those governance uh, related uh, 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 functionalities we are bringing as part of the mdg and uh, to support this governance we are also adding a staging layer staging tables so the staging area is a temporary place where your records will be there and once the re the record is gets finalized or finally approved then the record will be moved from your temporary persistent area which is nothing but your staging area to your underlying active area tables active area tables are nothing but your mara marci those esap tables okay so this is what we are going to discuss in your governance process okay so if you look at if you read the description it adds that uh, the governance flavor approval review process and uh, uh, the, the uh, by using this uh, staging area concept you can actually load you can keep your working record in the staging table only not to move it to underlying ecc until it gets finally uh, approved okay so that is what we are going to discuss as part of this one okay now you can also look at the last one central audit trail central audit trail means basically uh, so uh, because you are actually adding this uh, governance layer where uh, who uh, someone will create and someone will modify the data and it will go for approval and approver will approve and the data will get updated in your underlying ecc active area tables this is fine now later someone actually wants to uh, okay they have a raised a concern that okay who updated this value in my material then you can there are uh, i mean basically it is uh, you also have this uh, audit trail uh, uh, functionality that means you can review the changes done by the person or uh, uh, any group of people at later point of time so the entire life history of this particular master data including who did what changes when who who created who extended who blocked it who modified this attribute all this information will be get captured in the back end so there are out of box reports are there using that uh, uh, audit uh, reports you can pull all that information and you can actually uh, uh, business can use it for auditing purpose okay so that is the, again another aspect another dimension of your governance okay so this is about the governance now coming back to consistency so consistency means basically what happens is uh, if you are uh, the way how as i discussed earlier uh, in mdg there are out of box master data out of box uh, domain uh, master data is like material master business partners or uh, customers then vendors then you have finance objects then you also have article master and uh, ea uh, uh, eam objects that means your equipment functional location so those so all these are the different master data okay equipment function location all these are different master data okay so now all these master data you can create mdg by default it comes up, comes up with uh, uh, out of box uh, ui applications like how you have mm01 mm02 in the same way there are web based ui applications are already developed by sap 
and those will be provided uh, uh, to to support your master data creation change process okay so now when it comes to the consistency the ui applications for mm bp and everything right it follow the same theme maybe the application specific your material specific attributes might differ in material master you will have the plant information or else valuation or storage location information but the ui theme and look and feel will be same across like i mean how you are approving your uh, material related request is same as how you are approving your business partner or anything so the ui theme remains same it is consistent across all your master data okay so md uh, sap added a common approach consistent approach uh, for all the ui applications okay so that means if you if at all you wanted to review uh, you wanted to look at who approved this request and all you wanted to look at the audit trails or you wanted to see who is the person in the next approval so where you need to navigate on the ui application right those are having a consistent approach so if you know uh, uh, all these features by referring material master then the same way you can all the, that will follow the same approach for your business partner or customer also okay so if uh, consistency is not only from the ui point of view how you are building your workflows in mdg basically you will create a workflows the workflows are like i mean once requester will uh, initiate the request it goes to the approver approver will approve and it goes to the steward so you will develop a workflow in mdg okay so this development of workflows also if you know how to create a workflow for one object the same will be applicable for all other objects so everywhere for when you are handling single objects or when you are handling mass processing or when you are loading multiple records or when you are developing some workflows or when you are developing some replication configurations so whatever you do in mdg if you know it for one object it follows the same approach for other objects also that's where actually you can say it has a consistent approach okay so that is the about consistency okay now uh, uh, then consolidation so consolidation in the sense basically it is a latest new innovation from sap so sap added recently this consolidation in s4 onwards okay so what happens is we discussed about a, a typical uh, uh, mdg uh, architecture let's say for example this is your mdg system and you have your target system 1 and you also have target system 2 and target system 3 so usually we create the master data in mdg and the data will be distributed to the respective target systems but when it comes to consolidation there is a other side of story is also there that means it not necessarily that all the time your master data gets created in mdg in any typical organization there might be some source systems also there we, it can be either sap or non sap systems where the master data gets created in the respective systems let's say for example all these uh, source 1 2 3 are the non sap systems okay so uh, because of some geographical restrictions or whatever may be the reason the materials will get created in those respective systems in non sap so i am creating a uh, let's say for example i have a material called pump so i'm creating the pump here and i'll be using this particular pump in the some transactional activities similarly uh, i also create if i need the same pump i am also creating the same material here as well and i'm also creating the same material as here as well so likewise when there there is there is some distributed systems are there we especially in uh, in in the case of non sap systems people will be creating the master data in the respective systems okay so usually what we do uh, the consolidation talks about is so you can actually enable the channel that the, the master data will flow from your uh, multiple source system to mdg system okay it's the same material you will be loading from these multiple source systems into mdg but in mdg now we can take a call there is a using this consolidation approach using this particular consolidation is an again another small topic mdc we call it as a master data consolidation okay so using this consolidation what we do is if we are enabling this consolidation we will be sending the data to this consolidation component in the consolidation it will merge these three records and it will calculate one single best record and that record will be sent to your mdg that is nothing but one single pump so consolidation means basically 
when there is the same record exists in multiple source systems and when you wanted to load that uh, records into mdg system then what we do instead of creating those those many records i will consolidate and i can create a one single record okay. ंग you can keep those records as a three separate records or else you can club these three records into one single record okay so that it gives that option whether you wanted to uh, combined so when you are clubbing these multiple records into one single record on how i can update the data because each and every record has it assume that if it has its own set of attributes okay some of them are matching and some of them are ma not matching which record you need to consider as a reference record and copy the data from that particular record while creating a new consolidated record okay so there is a that we call it as a uh, best record calculation while clubbing these three records into single record there is an algorithm brc which we call it as in mdc best record calculation under this one there are multiple algorithms are there you need to choose one algorithm on which basis you will be merging if at all you wanted to go for a consolidation consolidated record okay so uh, that is uh, does it answer your question yes uh, yes akshay yes i i got it Now, okay. I mean, considering some uh, algorithms, we have to choose the yes. best match, and considering yeah. it as a reference, uh, consolidate yes. the data and send it to the targets, or create that's a master data in uh, source MDG yes. system. Yeah, that's true. So that is a latest uh, uh, component that SAP added, which we will be discussing uh, uh, once we complete our MDG topics, the consolidation one. So it's not only in consolidation. this is one aspect like uh, consolidating the records into single record so that is one aspect the other aspect is uh, that uh, sap uh, sap also introduced some of the mass capabilities as part of the consolidation uh, mod uh, component okay so if whoever might be working in mdg you might be aware of file upload file download to perform your mass operations okay so but those are not effective or performance uh, Uh, uh related uh, not a uh, better it doesn't give you a good performance when you are loading your you, multiple records using file upload if you are loading more than 500 records uh, you will get some issues performance related issues in mdg so to address all those issues sap introduced some of the mask capabilities or uh, ui applications in consolidation okay so majorly consolidation more than this uh, merging the records into single record so more than this uh, I, i have seen that people will be using those consolidation mass apps okay so those apps will be using extensively okay to perform the mass updates on any master data but uh, mdc is an optional component and uh, that has its own features like as i said majorly your consolidation process other one is the mass app so you can use, though you are not using it for consolidation purpose you can use this mass app to perform bulk operations which you can consider it as a replacement for your file upload or file download that comes in mdg we will see this those we will discuss okay so this is one uh, so this consolidation is also one of the uh, component uh, where you can actually consolidate or make use of some of the features of consolidation okay so next one is integration so integration is basically Uh, uh this one basically what happens is uh, you can easily integrate because mdg we are talking it as a centralized master data system and you will be having some other non sap or sap systems in the landscape and where the master data is required by those target system so in this case that is one aspect the other aspect is mdg can also receive the master data from multiple sources so this is your mdg centralized master data system and you have multiple uh, uh, target systems 
okay and you also have multiple source systems where the data will get created in the source systems and you can receive the data from this source systems to mdg okay so now mdg can being it as an sap system it can actually integrate easily with any sap or non sap systems for distribution of your master data okay so this is one uh, uh, so this is uh, we will discuss more uh, in in a data replication framework topic on this particular integration aspect okay so it, it also additionally can uh, uh, integrate with uh, any third party non sap systems like uh, duns and DN, duns and broad, broad state for some dnb for uh, some data enrichments okay so or else it can connect to some uh, vertex system for tax jurisdiction code derivations so likewise it can connect to non sap systems also for any external enrichments okay so that is about uh, the integration aspect okay now coming back to flexibility so this flexibility is uh, as i said earlier uh, uh, when you activate or enable mdg component then what happens is the out of box objects that sap is already uh, developed these masters your material master business partners under this business partners you have customers and you also have the vendors similarly finance objects so you have your all your finance objects over here cost center profit center gl account etc then there is something called article master is also there uh, and uh, you also have something called uh, eam objects in plant maintenance okay so all these are the out of box objects that sap is already developed on, uh, as part of mdg and all you need to just a plug and play kind of thing you need to enable the respective functions and you can start you configure as per your business needs now only these are available in the market from mdg okay out of these also sap exclusively developed these three objects okay the other two objects are developed by sap partner there is an organization called utopia okay so the sap partnered with this particular thought with this uh, uh, partner and uh, utopia actually developed uh, these objects uh, uh, as part of this uh, mdg uh, uh, solution extensions and uh, in a in a nutshell all these are available for the customer to uh, start using these master data in mdg now only these are available let's say for example uh, you have something called wbs element or plant or some anything or uh, employee so which you feel as a master data in your organization okay so other than this one there are some other masters are also available uh, 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 which we call which we will use it as a master data but there is no out of box solution for those masters in that case your mdg framework also allows you to develop your own master data that means i can call it as a custom object custom object like uh, you create uh, in abap z programs z classes and those kind of things right in the same way assume that plant creation is there usually we go to spro configuration and functional will create a plant now business says that no i wanted to add a governance flavor for plant creation so there is no out of box solution for plant in that case in mdg there is a small framework using which you can actually uh, create uh, develop this object you need to uh, develop that uh, the adding a governance flavor to your plant master okay so that is the flexibility that uh, you get it uh, okay uh, with mdg so by default sap uh, developed some of the masters and uh, Uh, given as an out of box solution for the customers but on top of that one if any customer uh, thing feels that okay i have some additional masters also which i wanted to use uh, mdg for my for my master data creation process then uh, that uh, that flexibility is also available where you can create your own custom objects as well we will see as part of this course we will be discussing both topics okay and finally you have something called data quality so data quality is also uh, as part of the mdg so what happens is this is your 
एस ए पी ई सी सी और एस फोर सिस्टम ओके नाउ यू आर एनेबलिंग द एम डी जी कॉम्पोनेंट ओके यू विल यूज ऑल दूर एम डी जी रिलेटेड स्टेजिंग एरिया एंड ऑल द फंक्शनलिटीज यू ऑल्सो हैव समथिंग कॉल वी डिस्कस्ड ऑप्शनली एम डी सी एम डी सी ओके दिस इज एन ऑप्शनल okay similarly there is again another component where as part of this mdc only you get this something called dqm data quality management this is also kind of optional okay so what happens is this dqm in the in the data quality management uh, you can actually define uh, if anyone heard about uh, information steward how information steward works uh, for validating your for measuring your data quality Uh, this is a kind of replacement for information steward this is the sap version of uh, uh, information steward dqm so what happens you have your database here your mara marsi tables okay you have 1 million of records so all these records got created via mdg layer now in dqm you can define certain rules okay the rules could be like okay if material type is equal to fer to finished product external material group uh, should not be blank this is the rule that uh, you have in all your material finished products external material group should not be a blank that is the business rule maybe for some reasons uh, you might be having uh, uh, some uh, external material groups blank for some of the records in this case you define such kind of all your business rules in dqm and this dqm when you run those rules this dqm will execute all, it will apply all the rules on your existing 1 million of records and assume that out of 1 million of records there are 500 records which are having external material group as a blank now you need to correct that one right so when you know where that uh, where uh, that loop hole is there or probably where uh, if you identify that all your uh, 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 inaccurate records then you can take an correction mechanism later so first i wanted to know how many records are errored error records i have in my system so that's how you define all the rules in dqm and uh, you can run that uh, dqm rules on your uh, uh, database or uh, existing ecs underlying database and it will give you the output as how many of the defected records then once you have those records then remediating those records is the next step so you will actually again uh, take it through the mdg process and uh, uh, correct those records and load the records into your uh, underlying ecc so that's how your dqm works data quality management it's an optional component add on component you can measure your data quality whether it is 60% good or 70% good or 100% good okay so the data quality is also there so these are the different uh, uh, at very high level uh, topics that we have in mdg or mdc or mdq uh, to uh, cover so any questions here are we good is this clear uh, that uh, the at yeah, very high level yeah. okay okay is so this uh, dq uh, dq uh, tool is this fpm based or it's a non sap tool uh, it's sap tool only it's a sap like a, uh, you have fury based uh, ui applications okay okay we will show i'll show you that uh, how those uh, the how to set up those rules and how we can run that and how we can measure the data quality so those things we'll discuss as part of the data quality topic okay fine now coming back to uh, the uh, mdg view mdg version so you can see this uh, uh, here this is the mdg version where you have your mdg as a centralized master data and uh, once the data the data gets created over here and the data can be distributed to the respective target systems over here 
it can be sap or non sap systems okay so this is your mdg only having mdg enabling the mdg component on your existing sap system okay so then the next one so you can see this consolidation for analytics that means this is again on the mdg only you are actually having a consolidation component on top of your mdg you have consolidation mdc master data consolidation component so when you enable this component what happens is you can receive the data from multiple sources and you can actually load the records into your consolidation component and there you can take a call whether you wanted to merge the records or you wanted to just bulk update and hand over the records to mdg or not so basically here uh, this is a consolidation uh, uh, alone without mdg it's a consolidation you can also install your mdc without mdg also but mostly people will be using on top of mdg not like a alone a standalone mdc system okay but basically consolidation is uh, to receive the data and from multiple source systems and load it to mdg okay now this is a hybrid approach hybrid approach in the sense in the same mdg system you will be enabling your mdg related component and you also enabling your consolidation related component consolidation will receive the data from multiple sources and uh, it will actually if at all it will merge the records and do some process over here and finally the consolidated records will be handed over to mdg and in mdg those records will be processed by reviewer approver and everything and finally the data will be distributed to the multiple target systems uh, like this is like an integration and a console all together right yes all together where you will be having consolidation as well as mdg Okay, fine. Now the next uh, one talks about how to enable my uh, MDG. How to enable my uh, the MDG component or MDC component in any SAP system. So usually we don't do this. It will be done by basis only. But this is just for our information purpose. I I. To enable your MDG, uh, to to if at all you wanted to use your uh, console uh, any MDG related process, first and foremost thing is you need a SAP system. SAP it can be ECC version or S4 version. You need a plain SAP system. On on this particular SAP system, you will be enabling MDG related uh, components. Basically, basis will do that one. How to enable? How to bring that MDG related uh, uh, functionalities into my system? This is there is something called business functions. Business functions. Okay, so those business functions you need to activate. So when you activate this particular business functions, this MDG related uh, uh, components will get enabled in your system. Similarly, you also have some additional business functions to enable your consolidation MDC master data consolidation. OK, so this particular diagram shows you that uh, uh, what business functions. So this particular portion is MDG specific business functions. This particular portion, your consolidation specific business functions. OK, so this is a 9.0. Currently, we have 9.2 version. So you might be seeing some additional business functions, but the concept remains same. OK, so now how to activate these business functions? So if you go to your any SAP system. OK, in this SAP system, the T code is SF w5 sfw5 is the t code where you can navigate to business functions but this will be performed by basis not by us
it takes a couple of minutes to open. So it's not only specific to MDG. This T code is generally if at all you wanted to activate SRM related module or IS retail module or any on a base SAP system you wanted to enable CRM or any add-on components. This is the place where basis will be doing. Okay, so similar way for MDG also the business. If you, you can actually see the business functions over here. So let me. You find the button. So these are the consolidation related business functions. So what happens is if you first time when you uh, get a fresh SAP system, so this will be in deactivation mode. Currently you can see this particular one is in uh, yellow, this particular bulb symbol you can see. So that means these are already activated. The consolidation related stuff got already activated in this particular system. Similarly, MDG related also. Should be there the business functions. So when you see something like this, it is not activated. OK, you can see some arrows in the bulb symbol. That means that it's a lightning bulb kind of thing that indicates that these functions got already activated. But where is, yeah, here. So all these are MDG related ones. So here in this system, these MDG related functionalities are got already activated. OK, so now if you look at this one, so let's first talk about foundation. What are these different uh, business functions? So this is one business function foundation underscore nine foundation underscore eight seven. All these are different business functions. OK, so now. Within this uh, uh, the down box within this particular down box. OK, so we have multiple. Uh, I can categorize these business functions into multiple business functions. That means let me show you here what I'm trying to say. OK, so. In MDG, okay, the business functions are categorized into two parts. One is foundation business functions, other one is application specific business functions. Okay, under foundation, okay, so uh, you can find here. These business functions are there. It starts from uh, foundation till foundation tool. This is the latest one, 2021. Okay, so that means uh, in the older versions, SAP initially introduced this only foundation. After that, with every release, right? So they added uh, all the new features under foundation two. And again, in the next release, they added few more release few more features in this foundation three. So everything whenever you see this number is getting increased, the delta features the SAP included under a new business function. If I'm in one release MDG eight release, now I wanted to use, uh, upgrade to MDG 9.2, then all these related business functions I need to activate. Or if you are activating MDG first time for the first time on a latest SAP system, then you need to activate all these in a sequence right from foundation till foundation tool. OK, then only you will get the complete uh, functionality. It's if you are activating only the latest one that doesn't bring you the complete stuff. It will only bring that uh, uh, that will actually will get failed also. Because you are uh, the features are spread across in multiple foundation business functions. 
So you need to activate till the latest one in a sequence. Okay. So now you can see here in MDG seven release day in MDG seven, you have foundation four. In seven, the latest upgraded pack, you have foundation five. In MDG eight, SAP added this foundation six. Similarly, MDG nine version, they added seven. Likewise, so on and so forth. You can find whenever the SAP is coming up with the latest release, they are adding these new foundations, business functions. So you basis need to activate those business functions. Okay. Now what this foundation business function will contain? It contains the generic platform or framework, MDG framework related uh, uh, objects. It doesn't include whether it's a material or a BP or anything. The common framework related, MDG framework related uh, 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 features or functionalities are available in the foundation business functions. It doesn't talk about uh, material or BP or customer or anything. Now, if at all, so that means your foundation is a bare minimum. First, you need to activate all the business functions related to foundation. After that, when it comes to the application specific, it talks about there are specific business functions are there for MM. Similarly, there are specific business functions are there for BP, customer plus vendor. And there are some specific business functions are there for finance. Similarly, you'll have different business functions for article master and EAM. So these are the application specific business functions. OK, so if at all I wanted to use material master uh, in my uh, MDG system, I don't know I'm, uh, BP or customer or vendor or finance is not in my scope currently. Then you need to first activate a foundation plus on top of that one, you need to activate MM related business functions so that you can start using your MM related uh, uh, functionalities. If you also want later BP customer vendor, then later point of time you can activate this. So foundation is a bare minimum or common. This is a prerequisite. After that depends on your business uh, requirements. You can choose to activate the respect to object specific business functions. So that's why you see foundation is mandatory. After that you see, for material master, you have a separate uh, business functions. Similarly for finance, you have a separate business functions. Over here for supplier master, you have separate business functions. Similarly, for customer master, one business, one set of business functions. And similarly, uh, you have for business partners, BUPA. Business partners, you have different business functions. So that is what you can look at in this particular diagram also. Okay. So this under this application specific. These will be covered. Material master, customer vendor. OK, under the foundation, you can see this foundation seven is there. So these are the foundation related ones. So likewise, you need to activate the respect to business functions, not you basically the basis uh, to uh, get that latest. Uh, uh, if at all, you wanted to use the latest uh, uh, MDG components. So this is the place where you can check. The which business functions got activated. Similarly, I showed you that consolidation also. OK, also you can also look at the version here. You go to state system status. OK, here installed product versions. Not here. You will have your MDG foundation. What is the current latest component installed on this system? MDG foundation release is 806. Uh, support pack level is this one. Similarly, this is your application related uh, one. Okay, so these two will give you because when you are applying any SAP OSS nodes, right, to fix any issues, so you will you can also look at uh, uh, the latest version uh, to identify whether it is applicable this node for the current release or not. OK, so. Any questions till now? Are we good? Sorry, actually, um, 
all this needs to be done in uh, MDG system, right? Completely. Yeah. Yeah. In MDG system, I am coming back to that. Uh, I will add some more details uh, uh, after this uh, one, so that it will clarify where you are. You want, you need to install this. For now, yes, MDG system. But uh, uh, let me show you visually uh, that. Uh, uh, what are the different way in what are the different uh, ways I can install this MDG components? Okay, thank you. Okay, fine. If no questions, let's move on. The next slide here talks about something called hub versus co deployment. Okay, so now we know that okay, to activate my MDG component, I need to install something called business functions. And those business functions are categorized into foundation and application specific. Foundation is mandatory one to uh, before applying your application specific business functions. Okay. Now, where do inst where do I need to activate all these business functions? That's where we talk about this hub versus co deployment, which is very very important. Hub versus co deployment. Okay, so now, okay, so let's take example. What is MDG Hub? Okay, so MDG Hub means you already have your uh, transactional systems are already available in your organization, like uh, different SAP systems, SAP one, SAP two, and SAP three, or non-SAP systems also. Okay, so these are already available. Now, as I said, the prerequisite is you should have an SAP system to activate these particular business functions. So, in that, uh, uh, with that particular statement, this is also an SAP system. I can activate my MDG component here. This is also another SAP system. I can activate here as well. I can activate here as well. Okay, so which system I need to choose to activate the business functions? Okay, that's where. Hub is the model where you don't want it to touch any of these existing systems. Don't activate your MDG uh, as part of the hub. Don't instead of activating the MDG thing in the respect to uh, SAP systems, I will take a brand new system, SAP system. Okay, so this is my brand new SAP system. On top of this particular system, I'll go to that SFW 5T code and I'll activate the business functions in this system. So that means my MDG component will be activated. Okay, now in this SAP, so now I'm calling this is my centralized master data system. That means your MDG components are not available in any of these systems. It will be available only in this particular system. Now I create the master data in this particular MDG system, okay, and I'll replicate the data to the respective target system. Now all I need is this master data should be available in this respective target systems. So that's where I'm creating in a separate system and replicating or distributing the data to all the required target systems to support the transactional activities. So this we call it as a hub system. Okay, now hub system is this SAP system is a kind of copy of this any of these systems only. So, but in this SAP system, you don't do any transactional activities. This particular system is exclusively for creation of master data. That means all your Mara, Marci tables or whatever the tables that are designed provided for to store your master data that will have the data. But your transactional tables will be there, VBA, PVBA, v, whatever the transactional related tables are there. So those tables will be empty only. Because I'm not going to create any orders or anything. I just only create the master data and replicate the data to the respective target systems. So the transactional activities will be created in this target systems. So this is one approach, hub system. Hub means you are having a you are introducing one brand new sap system and you are activating your mdg related functionalities into that system that's we call it as a mdg hub system clear yes actually something like only specific to mdg yes exactly okay now other thing is co-deployment co-deployment what is this co-deployment okay 
so co deployment means instead of introducing or adding enabling uh, uh, adding a new sap system mdg system into my landscape why can't i use one of the existing system as my mdg system i can also activate the business functions here that means in case of co deployment scenario you won't be having this centralized system okay so that means it will be something like this co deployment okay you already have your sap 1 sap 2 sap 3 okay now assume that i'm using this system my, my master data system i'm enabling that uh, components so you will get your mdg components over here okay so now this system acts as my master data system as well as my transactional system because i am already performing some transactional activities over here so it means my both the master data and transactional data coexist in the same system this is that's that is what we call it as a co deployment scenario and the distribution anyway i can replicate because this is a uh, i can replicate to any of these target systems distribution this is co deployment so you are installing your mdg component on top of, on the existing uh, transactional system only that we call it as a co deployment system clear so akshay what are the pros and cons of each approach yeah, that we will discuss now okay. so once you understand this both just give me a minute okay so yeah so this this is a co deployment so you you have option to enable your mdg component in uh, either of these modes so generally if you are uh, people the first question is okay people will ask you that okay if you are working on mdg okay so whether it is a co deployment or hub scenario so that means that you should get uh, this visualization in your mind uh, when you are thinking about hub versus co deployment okay so now we will discuss about what is the pros and cons and after that in what case, what scenarios we will prefer uh, to go for which approach okay so that we will discuss now so you can look at this in this particular diagram you have this is a hub scenario this is a hub scenario where you are activating your mdg component in this particular system and after that you have two target systems erp1 and erp2 this is a hub example for hub scenario co deployment means this is a co deployment example okay so here if you look at this one of your oper erp1 system you are activating mdg component and uh, the data you need it to other erp2 if at all you can actually set up a replication configuration from erp1 to erp2 so here you have two systems here you have three systems okay so now this is about hub versus co deployment okay now let's look at what are the pros and cons of each of these approaches okay so first one is mdg hub co deployment okay in case of hub this is your you should get this visualization this is your transactional one transactional two this is your mdg system <coughs> in case of co deployment you have your transactional one on top of that one you are activating your mdg and you also have transactional two you can replicate the data from here to here okay so now first one when you are going for a hub scenario here you need an extra system okay which actually uh, that uh, costing factor also come into picture client should be able to afford this particular one 
cost okay for because it's not only adding a new sap uh, system the maintenance cost and the support cost everything uh, you need we need to uh, consider okay so there is an additional uh, cost involved when you are going for hub scenario because you are adding a new system whereas in case of co deployment there is no additional system required the existing uh, system only i'm activating it right so there is no maybe relatively the effort or maintenance effort will be there because to support uh, the additional uh, uh, components but if you look at from the cost wise there is no separate cost uh, involved for the hardware and everything okay so from cost point of view so this is a, a, a no additional cost no additional cost okay so this is a, a one basically it works towards favor of this one if client has a, a, a very particular about uh, the uh, cost and everything okay so now the next important uh, another point is okay so assume that in mdg let's say for example if at all i have to create a, a, a material in this particular mdg in hub scenario okay so this is a separate all together a separate box and your material types are probably the plant creation and everything right so usually without mdg what happens the mm functional consultants will create all the required material types rls unit of measures so we call it as a reference master data reference master data means the data that is uh, uh, useful i mean which you are referring while creating your actual master data while i am creating a material i need a material types i need material groups i need to configure unit of measures plants sales organizations valuation areas so all these so many uh, data that you you are not actually creating those material types you are using the existing material types uh, while creating your material so that those data you call it as a reference master data your currencies your country and your plants sales works all these things we call it as a reference master data usually this data will be set up by the mm or uh, sd or fi functional consultant in this transactional systems now we need to sync that because in mdg also if at all i have to create a master data i need those material types and everything the configuration so that means on time to time basis whatever the additional reference master data that you are creating in respect to these systems that data has to be synced either automatically or manually into this particular system as well because your mdg in mdg also when you are creating a master data using mdg it refers it refers your existing sprvo configurations only so that means additional maintenance or uh, uh, sync, sync is required sync is required config sync this is a config sync whereas in case of co deployment your mm consultant will do in the same system and your mdg will look into that your sprvo configurations that because it's already available in the same system right no config sync here clear is this point Uh, yes. Okay. So this is also actually basically these two. This it involves cost and it involves some additional effort. Here also there is no config sync, so the effort will be less here. Okay. So sorry now. to interrupt, Akshay. Yeah, yeah please. Uh, like the sync is required because we have an external system, right? Yes. I mean. That's true. That's true. That's true. Because here you have three systems. mdg has a additional system right someone has to replicate the same config if i am creating a new material type uh, in this transactional one system the same material type should be available in my mdg also then only i can create the material i can use that new material type uh, while creating the materials right yes yes akshay please okay okay so now that uh, another uh, uh, important point after this let me look at uh,
Okay. So these two points basically works towards your uh, co-deployment, but there is very, very important point, which actually works in favor of your hub, hub scenario. Okay. So let me explain what is that. So what happens is this is your SAP system, MDG system, where you have your SAP uh, ECC. Okay. This is the MDG component. Now, as I said earlier, to activate your MDG component, you should have a prerequisite. It should be, you can activate only on top of any existing SAP system. So that means you have this SAP system. Assume that it is there somewhere around uh, EHP, some level, some version. EHP, for example, I don't know the numbers, but uh, EHP 8 or some version. Assume that this underlying uh, ECC uh, system. Now, currently you are in MDG the version assume that version is MDG 8. Now you wanted to upgrade from MDG 8 to MDG 9.2, which is the latest version. That means the additional business functions are there. You need to activate those additional business functions so that because you know that some customer is asking for some requirements. Those are not available in 8 and you, ne you need to upgrade to 9.2 to, uh, to make use of those features. So that means you need to upgrade to 9.2. So to upgrade to 9.2, as in the if you look at that release notes also, SAP mentions that it makes mandatory that you should have upgrade, you should have a bare minimum of let's say for example EHP 10 or something, because you cannot directly simply upgrade activate the business function. You should look at your underlying uh, ECC version also. So SAP says to activate your 9.2 features, you need to upgrade to HP 10. So that means indirectly it has a dependency with your underlying uh, uh, SAP uh, ECCRS4 component. Okay, now assume that this is a transactional your co-deployment scenario. In case of co-deployment, what happens is this is all the transactional activities are already running in this particular system or everything. There are so many enhancements and everything is done in this particular ECC layer. Now, because you wanted to upgrade to 9.2, you are also upgrading from lower version to higher version EHP 8 to 10. Because of this one, what happens is it increases the effort as well uh, to because uh, you already you need to do all the spaw adjustments and everything and there is a testing required by all the service lines. Uh, to see their functionalities are not broken. Okay, so everything basically you are touching this uh, just simply because 9. Point, uh, you, someone is looking for 9.2 uh, to use some of the features. So that means we are disturbing the existing transactional system in terms of effort, in terms of testing and everything. So you cannot alone uh, go take a decision that okay, I, I can I'll upgrade uh, from 8 to 9.2. You need to first take a call from all the service lines uh, uh, who are actually using the same system, all the stakeholders. Basically, you need to get the approval and you need to plan for it. There is a lot of testing is also required. So in case of co-deployment scenario, it directly has a dependency with your underlying component and only when they agree, then you will go for an upgrade. Right? Okay, now assume that in case of hub scenario, this is my hub system MDG. Okay, and this is my target systems. Now, let it be there at the lower version EHP 8 only all these systems. I'm not going to touch anything because this is also initially at EHP 8. Now I can upgrade 8 to 10 without asking these teams. Because this, this is a standalone MDG system. I can go for an upgrade here underlying component because there is no transactional activities are running in this particular system layer. So I don't have any dependency. I can upgrade uh, 8 to 10 and I can upgrade from a, a MD, MDG 8 to 9.2. So that means your MDG upgrades or your MDG roadmap is independent of your uh, transactional uh, or ECC system. Whereas in case of co-deployment scenario, it has a direct dependency. This is very, very important 
uh, in terms of because the, when if you look at the bigger organizations, right, uh, like Amazon, Google, or any uh, Walmart, any uh, big retailers, uh, they will be having so many systems. And if you are going for a simply for just a, a MDG to go for an upgrade, if you are simply upgrading your underlying ECC systems, you don't get that uh, approval soon. That's a very big activity that everything everyone has to uh, plan it. Uh, okay. So whereas in case of you are having an hub system, then it will be uh, uh, independent of your truck because we are not impacting the transactional systems, so it will be faster. Okay. So that is one aspect important one the other aspect is in terms of the performance so uh, what happens is in your transactional systems also in day in day out you will be handling multiple uh, uh, bulk orders and bulk basically mass processes so your system work processes will be allocated to your transactional activities if you are getting some 3000 5000 idocs or uh, services, inbound RFC costs, those things, right? You are always, your work processes will be allocated, uh, uh, busy with this transactional thing. Okay. So in MDG also, we will be performing some bulk updates or some mass processes on the master data. So it will be difficult uh, or uh, in terms of uh, from the system configuration point of view also to handle both the cases. Even though if you increase the number of work processes and everything, definitely at the database level, all these uh, updates has to flow back to your database, right? There it will become a bottleneck. So if I'm splitting that into MDG mass processes in one system and it has a separate database and the transactional activities will be a separate system, it has its own database. So I'm splitting those two things. I'm keeping both as a separate. So then there is no over, uh, overlap each other. So from the performance point of view also, if you have a separate uh, hub system, that will be uh, better always. So SAP recommends always to go for a hub scenario instead of co-deployment, especially when you have multiple target systems in your landscape. If you, if you ha only have one single system, there are no other SAP systems, and uh, your volume of transactions, everything is little low, then it makes sense to go for a co-deployment scenario. Okay, so all this we are talking about where to activate my MDG component, which system I call it as my MDG system. Either hub, hub model you choose or you choose a co-deployment. In case of co-deployment, uh, we always uh, uh, strictly say that if you only have one single SAP system and your volume is less, then go for core deployment. Otherwise, keep it separate uh, MDG as a separate system and uh, don't mix with your transactional systems. Okay, clear. Any questions? Okay, so if you look at uh, this particular uh, diagram also, it says that in case of co-deployment, your SPRO configuration, everything is available in the same system. There is no sync or anything. Whereas in case of hub scenario, this is uh, your uh, ECC uh, uh, transactional system. So what are the configuration activity you do? You need to sync to your MDG on time to time basis. Okay. So these are the differences that we discussed, uh, like uh, TCO means it's uh, from the cost impact, from the cost perspective, they, there is no additional system maintenance in case of, sorry, there's an additional maintenance in case of hub deployment. You are customizing our reference master data to be synced all the time. Okay, future flexibility in the sense, if at all you wanted to go for any upgrades or something, so you have that flexibility. Clean data approach means, basically you are separating your master data, you will have one, dedicated system where you will have all the master data, whether it's a materials or customers or partners or anything, you will have a clean data approach. Whereas in case of co-deployment system, if you look at this, your uh, the reference master data configurations will be shared by MDG and transactional both. So no need of for that sync and everything. Your MDG upgrades has a dependency on your ERP. Okay, so this is also talks about your ER, it has to bound to your ERP roadmap. Okay, 
so and uh, this one also talks about uh, the same whatever we discussed the pros and cons of each of these approaches okay so then so if is this clear to everyone hub versus co deployment because we should know when when i'm talking about uh, some mdg related thing so where we are talking in hub in hub also or whether it is in co deployment any questions till now so i hope you all are with me right please feel free to uh, ask me if something you are not getting i can repeat it okay okay so is this clear till now because the thing is that if things are not clear in the first in initial sessions right what happens is uh, you will have that gap that gap will be increased uh, on session by session this is a uh, mdg architecture over you okay so you will it will cover all the components of uh, mdg uh, along with that all the surrounding systems and everything okay so if you look at this the central one is this is the central one is your mdg system okay in the mdg system as we discussed earlier right so this is your underlying ecc or uh, the s4 layer where you will have a web application uh, layer and also your the logistics or erp layer so this this particular portion whatever you see here this particular portion basically is your underlying uh, uh, we call it as our ecc or something on top of this one only we'll activate our mdg component so in the diagrams also whenever uh, uh, i create uh, i'll draw this particular mdg diagram i'll be drawing something like this okay so this is your underlying uh, ecc and this is your mdg component here you will have your uh, abap layer plus your erp it can be ecc or it can be your s4 system okay so this is one on top of this you will be having your mdg component so this particular portion talks about this okay and uh, after this on top of this one assume that if i activate my mdg component right so then uh, if i activate my mdg component then you will find this uh, uh, mdg related uh, box here this is your mdg related box okay so all mdg related functionalities will get uh, activated now on the left hand side you see some optional integrations which you can integrate uh, with your mdg mdg can integrate with these systems on the right hand side you see uh, the master data that mdg can distribute to this target systems okay so now now let's look at uh, closely that uh, within this mdg box what are these different uh, things you can find right so what are these ones in mdg box okay so as i said in mdg whenever you activate your mdg uh, uh, business functions system automatically uh, generates something called staging area that means your uh, temporary persistence area you call it a staging area or but ultimately those are kind of sap generated uh, ab uh, sap tables okay so that we call it as a that uh, that a staging area comes under your part of your data model there is a topic uh, data model data model okay we'll as part of the data model we'll discuss about all the staging area concepts and everything okay now this particular gray color box talks about your mdg staging area that means what happens is the stage system will generate staging area for material master when you activate material master related business functions it will generate the staging area or staging tables for your finance when you activate uh, finance related business functions and it will activate uh, business partner related staging area when you activate uh, the business partner related functions so if there will be a dedicated staging areas are available or staging tables are available for your respect to uh, 
uh, application master data. Okay. Additionally, if as I said earlier, if you feel that some master data, some object is a, you consider it as a master data in your organization, like it can be plants or it can be employee master or something else, which doesn't cover as part of the out of box data models or out of box uh, master data. Then there is something called the custom object framework using which you can actually build, uh, you can develop those staging areas. So in MDG, you can configure uh, uh, the data model, something we call it as a data models. So once you configure the data model for your object, custom object, then system automatically generates the required staging areas uh, uh, for your master data. So that means your staging area not limited for only these objects. You can create as many as master data using MDG custom object framework and system will generate the respective staging areas. But ultimately this gray color box, that's why SAP has provided, uh, uh, the, as I said earlier, material master, finance and business partners are the ones that SAP delivered. And uh, even the SAP partners that they developed uh, that article master or uh, EAM objects that also using this custom object framework only. So they developed uh, those uh, related uh, functionalities. So that's why they gave it as a generic uh, terminology using this custom object framework you can create your own z master data objects or as you uh, uh, you can use the standard ones but these four boxes deals with your staging content staging area okay now what is staging area uh, okay so that we discussed earlier in mdg also you will have some set of tables okay so if user logs into mdg your application and if he is trying to create any master data, initially the data gets stored into this one. And after this, once after all the review process, approve process is done, and finally this records needs to be activated or make it available for the transactional ones, or final up, once it is final approved, then the record will be moved to your, it, it will be made available into your underlying, uh, uh, the actual active area tables. So this is your staging table, which actually a part of MDG, and these are your active area tables. Okay, so this is about uh, the staging thing. Okay, now to access SAP also developed uh, for every master data, SAP also developed uh, uh, the UI applications, out of box UI applications. OK, so you no need to develop for material master or business partners. You no need to uh, develop any new applications. There are out of box UI applications are available. So this is what it talks about this one. User interfaces or the roles, work centers for approval review. All those out of box UI applications are already de de developed. OK, for any custom objects, we need to create our own UI applications. OK, so this is what, what it talks about that you will have a specific roles for requesters, specific roles for approvers. You will have some specific authorizations and everything. So it this deals with your complete UI stuff, this particular component. OK, and after that. Workflows like uh, MDG, this, this we call it as a MDG workflows. You can develop the workflows in MDG. OK, so what does a typical workflow look like in MDG? OK, so let me give a quick introduction on the workflow topic. OK, so let's say, for example, in general, uh, in MDG, that requester will log into MDG and he will initiate a material creation process. He wants to set up a new material. So he will log into the MDG UI application and he will go to the create material app. And from the create material application, he will enter all the required data. He'll submit the request. So what happens? This request, it will go to, for example, approver, maybe plant approver. Or else it will, this request will go to procurement department. Procurement department. Now procurement department will open that uh, particular request and he will review the data entered by the requester and he can take a call that to approve the request or else to reject the request. 
if he rejects this request it will go to the requester again for any further corrections okay or else uh, this request is no more uh, not required this uh, we already have a particular material so this is uh, not required then he can also complete he can also roll back this request he can roll back this request or else if the procurement department approves this it will assume that it will go to the sales department and also at the sales also will you will provide option to approve or you will provide option to reject so assume that sales department approves this request then it will assume that it goes to that uh, there is something called uh, activation process we will have and the activation process is nothing but uh, moving the data from your staging record to your active area or underlying ecc tables so this kind of workflow this is one example of how your mdg workflow look like Whereas in MM01, if you are creating a material, right? Once you enter the data and hit the save button, automatically that material will get, be available in your uh, Mara Marci tables. But in this example, all your data will be there in your staging area till here. Only at the activation time, your data will be moved to your underlying your ECC tables. So these are the workflows. One example. There might be multiple. Th these are all. These are the configurable work or configurable workflows. You can have a sequential workflow. You can have a parallel workflows. You can have a uh, hybrid approach, sequential plus parallel. So depends on your business needs. You can have all the different kind of workflows in MDG. Okay. So it talks about this particular diagram that you see here. It talks about the workflow component of MDG, how we can actually develop the workflows. OK, so then this is your staging. Staging is nothing but uh, these ones only. Object specific uh, uh, staging uh, uh, tables will be available. OK, now you have something called over here, something called validation. Validation means these are the business rules while creating the master data. Business come up with a certain rules. Okay, these attributes are mandatory. When you enter this data, this this attribute should this is the only allowed attribute. Or when you are creating material, all the materials should get extended to these plants. So like uh, you will have certain rules, business validations or some derivations will be available. So MDG also has inbuilt a framework to incorporate or to add your business specific rules in while creating your or while updating your master data. So that is a small uh, framework is there for validations or derivations. OK, so apart from that, you have something called a change. There is a concept called change request concept in MDG. OK, and uh, you also have this uh, governance process. There are some such applications are there. Data quality uh, adapters are available. UI framework. There are some out of box analytical UI applications are there and uh, it deals with your replications and key value mapping. The, all these are the different uh, 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 topics for us in MDG. All these features forms your the whole MDG uh, process. So as part of our MDG course, we will we will start our uh, uh, top, uh, first topic with the data model concept, which deals with your data model and uh, the staging area. And after that, we will be getting into our UI applications and we will be discussing about the workflows, validations, all these change requests and replications, everything. So this is a complete, uh, we will be discussing each and everything within this area. Now once, after all these things, once your master data that gets created or that moves to your underlying ECC, from here, your replication process will take care of replicating the master data to the respective target systems. This is part of your data replication framework, DRF. OK. Now, on the left hand side, you can see some. Uh, so this is about the targets, target side and within MDG. OK, on the left hand side, you can see uh, this particular portion. What is this? Earlier, let's say, for example, uh, uh, if at all I wanted to uh, measure my data quality, uh, we used to integrate uh, information steward tool with MDG. But of course, it was now it replaced with a DQM. So DQM is part of your MDG add-on component only. But your MDG can also talk to 
uh, information steward you can integrate with information steward you can integrate mdg with something called data services for any address validations or verifications you can connect to uh, these uh, uh, data services okay so there is something called information management suite is also there so these are the uh, uh, optional integration where your MDG can integrate with uh, these uh, 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 SAP or non-SAP systems to further uh, enrich your master data. Or I wanted to make a call to DNB server while creating my customer or vendor. So your MDG can make a call on fly and get the data and update your master data, further enrich your master data. So they, on the left hand side, these are the kind of optional integrations. And also there are out of box of Fury apps are also available. So to access your master data in MDG, okay, in general, in ECC, you go to MM03 to view your material, or you go to XK03 to view your customer or vendor. Similarly, uh, in uh, MDG also, there are Fury apps are available where you can access your uh, uh, master data, or uh, there are something called NetWeaver Business Client FPM applications are also there, which is web-based applications to create your master data, to change the master data, to display the master data, those things. Okay, so we'll be talking about both as part of this course. So this is about uh, the architecture overview. Any questions on this? This is clear. Okay, I assume that uh, it's clear. Okay. Yes, Akshay. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> uh, so this is the this is actually not the architecture view master data. Okay, so you can find here all the out of box master data that MDG covers. So it covers your material master. It covers your BP customer vendor. It covers your finance or master data. And EAM is nothing but uh, developed by uh, SAP uh, partners. Okay. And this is retail and fashion means it's a RFM. This is RFM solution where article master is there. Article master. So the T code is to create article master MM41. Now that can be created. All those articles can be created using MDG. So these are the out of box solutions that are already available uh, uh, where, and you need to just activate the respective business functions. So once you activate the business function, you can start uh, uh, configure as per your business needs and uh, start using this uh, uh, MDG solution. Apart from this, if business is looking any other master data that should be created or uh, governed via MDG, then it will become a kind of development uh, work for us. Uh, as a using the custom object uh, framework, we need to develop that objects. Then only business can use it. It's not a kind of plug and play. But that is possible. Okay. So. Any questions till now? Fine. Now let's uh, get into system. Uh, wanted to show you. Okay. So assume that uh, you have or uh, the basis activated the MDG business functions and then uh, uh, everything. Now where I can see uh, where I can do all the configurations related to MDG. If it is an ECC normal, you will go to SPRO configuration. Under the SPRO configuration, you will find all your uh, logistics or related or finance related or enterprise structure related, all these configurations, SPRO configurations. Okay, so MDG specific configurations also available over here. Uh, uh, it, should be under cross application component. 
under cross application component you will have something called processes and tools here you find this mdg master data governance so under this you will be doing all the configurations you can find here central governance here you can look at all these uh, different kind of uh, configurations okay you will get to see under this mdg you get to see all these sub nodes only when you activate the business functions if you don't activate the business functions and if you take any non mdg system and if you expand this you will find this node but under this node everything will be empty that means mdg functions are not activated or else you can go to sfw5 and look at whether mdg functions are activated or not okay but every time navigating from spro then cross application component and uh, till here so there is a shortcut uh, t code okay so that is mdg img mdg img is a shortcut uh, t code which will directly take you to the mdg configuration okay so in this mdg configuration you will find all the different nodes so again this configuration split into two parts you can see here the general settings okay so when you expand general settings 90% of your configurations you will do under this general settings only okay you have your data model specific data model is one topic for us the next topic okay so if you look at uh, this gray colored four boxes that which we are talking and uh, this staging area so that is that is covered under this data model topic so in this data model topic we will be designing uh, how our uh, uh, model should look like and uh, based on that one finally system will automatically generate the required staging tables for you so data model is our topic because you need to have a staging area uh, uh, for uh, your master data to store your master data temporarily without staging area you cannot actually do anything in mdg of course for mm and bp the data model the data models are the, those things are already available for your custom objects you need to create your own data models okay so data model topic deals with your staging content once your staging area is ready then you need an ui application to create a master data that we will be discussing in the ui modeling okay so once your ui model is done ready then you need to have your uh, something called change request process and workflows okay so those all those process modeling this is what your core of mdg where we are discussing about that adding that governance flavor to your master data right so that will be done under this uh, topic process modeling you will be defining the process your material creation process or material change process you will be modeling that uh, those processes in this particular configuration okay so once you configure all your processes then it comes to your validations while creating the data probably business will come up with their own specific rules validations or derivations so those validations and derivations we will be discussing under this topic okay and after that we will be discussing your data replication part in both the re data replication and value mapping key mapping this talks about your mass processing okay so all the mdg whatever we discussed in this particular architecture right these small small boxes and this text so these are this these are all these things will be covered under this general settings here you will be doing for all the master data you will use this under the general setting only you will do all the configurations now apart from this sap also provided some specific configurations if you are working on material master there is a specific on top of this one once this general setting everything you configure over here if there are some additional configurations are there which are specific to material master that will be covered over here similarly for your customer business partner finance uh, contract accounts so all those configurations uh, the objects application specific configurations are also provided over here small small configurations these are very minor or less configuration but 95% we will be spend, spending our time under the general settings only so this whole as part of mdg we will be covering all this this entire configuration
okay t code is mdg img so always this uh, this particular t code we should remember and we will be always using this on day in day out when you are working in mdg okay fine now let's uh, look at visualize how you are uh, the mdg ui look like where i will go and create master data and uh, how i can search my materials and all those things okay so we will start with our uh, fpm uh, uh, based uh, applications okay so to get into that that transaction code is nwbc where you can actually uh, log into your uh, uh, browser based netweaver business client okay so when you enter nwbc if it is a single sign on it won't ask for all this user id and password okay so usually it won't ask for this user credentials if it is a single sign on okay so you, here you will see all these different uh, roles that uh, uh, my user is having but you can navigate to this nwbc directly when you click on this nwbc here you can see this is your uh, home page where depends on your authorization you will get to see these multiple tabs over here okay so here first you look at this material governance there is a tab called material governance because i have access to this material governance uh, i can see this one so when i click on this material governance this is the home page for your complete material master uh, 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 governance okay so here this particular page split into smaller sections you can see at the here material processing is there this is the place where you can search your materials you can create a material you can change a material you can mark for delete a material it is equivalent to your mm01 mm02 this is mm05 or 06 some transaction and you can search materials okay and uh, this in this particular section you can perform mass operations this is to deal with your individual material single objects one material by material here this section is for multiple materials you can do perform file upload file download mass change all these things this one this particular section is basically if at all uh, you wanted to see the status of your the workflow the request whether it is approved or not approved or probably if there are some uh, uh, requests are pending for your approval this is your work center in the diagram in the architecture diagram if you look at this one there is something called work centers this work center is nothing but this one workflow inbox and you can look at uh, your request that you created and you can look at any other uh, request by providing the request numbers change documents this is for the audit trials you can look at uh, okay uh, for a particular material till now who all are change this material you can look at the change documents okay so this is for the reporting purpose reporting analytical reports where for example how many uh, how many requests met sla how many doesn't met sla how many approved in time how many missed uh, the sla so you can find all that uh, auto box reporting over here and this section talks about your replication framework if at all you wanted to replicate any master data from one system to other system and you can actually do multiple activity you can monitor the replication status everything you can add some filters while replicating so this is the one and this talks about how to load the data into mdg system data transfer thing okay now so this this is the how the home page look like and the same navigation you can also find on the from this left side as well you will see when you go to this material processing it will show you search create all these things okay so the same thing whatever is the same home page you have a navigation from here as well and this is especially only exclusively for uh, material master this particular uh, uh, home page similarly you will also have the similar kind of home pages for all the masters let's look at customer governance it follows the same approach if you remember that one of that uh, consistency across that we discussed at the in mdg features right consistency consistency means if you know the navigation for one 
the, it it follows the same approach for customer master also you have search you have all this mass processing you have the workflow inbox change documents you have that reports and replication data loads everything okay so likewise you can find uh, this is for the contract account uh, governance so basically i'm trying to show you that uh, how the home pages look like of course we will go through each and every link and uh, we'll see this is for finance accounting okay so likewise it looks that it look like the same thing okay so depends on the rows that you have the respective tabs will be enabled and you can access to those uh, uh, home pages okay so now let's look at how the search applications i don't think these kind of search applications are available in your ecc all you need to go to that uh, f4 and uh, search or uh, some materials but there is no dedicated applications provided uh, for searching any master data in ecc but in mdg search is a very very powerful uh, application you can perform a lot of activities from the search application okay so if i go to search material so you can see this particular search space got split into two parts one is the top one your selection criteria where you provide you can search materials on based on different parameters different parameters you can search materials okay if i choose for example okay you can you will find you can see here you can search materials with different parameters and these parameters also you can actually configure what search parameters i need to enable for the user depends on the business requirements okay now I, okay so this is the one you can provide and uh, uh, then you can also search based on the classification by class and characteristics you can add and you can perform the search so this is your search provide your, your input criteria and click on search so let me let's give some test and click on search so it will show you it shows one material one record test if i don't provide any or probably if i am i wanted to search with material description description test search okay you will find many materials over here okay so this particular result got spread across 10 pages and we are limiting our search to 100 records that's why 10 pages in each page 10 records so totally 100 records result shown over here if at all you want more re records you can change this to 500 or whatever the number when you click on this it will the result will uh, you will get more pages more results if there is a data see 25 okay so this is your search result so you user will provide your uh, uh, input criteria and uh, click on search based on that one you will get the re uh, the re uh, result okay now uh, he from here also i can create a new material or else i can select existing material and i can copy while creating i can copy with reference or i can perform i can select multiple materials i can perform a mass change using these two operations i can look at the change documents that is for audit trials who changed what i can also look at the replication log or from here itself you can replicate you can look at uh, there is something called change request concept we can look at the all the available change request for this materials so likewise you can search is a centralized place or it's a kind of one stop for all your activities this is an out of box ui that sap provided similarly if i go to the gov customer governance also there also the same search ui application look like the same thing 
the only difference is instead of material you will have you can search with the customer materials here, customer data okay so you see here again here also you have the you can search based on different parameters and once you search you will get the result in the dom okay you will see that the result and from here also you can create a new if at all you wanted to block the customer you can block the customer you can mark this customer as delete you can look at the change documents application status all these things so it has a consistent approach across all your uh, the ui it can be ui application or it can be when you are designing the workflows also if you know how to design a workflow for one master it will be same for all okay but these are the in general uh, the ui look like uh, uh, your work centers or home page look like okay now let's go to search application now let's try to create a material the same way i showed you from mm01 here also you can create a material this is the creation of, creation of a material using mdg ui okay so now this we will discuss little later change request but from here change management or basic data onwards it is your uh, material related data you can enter your material number base unit of me unit of measure material type industry sector so you can enter all your uh, 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 this is equivalent to combined view of your basic data one and two of uh, mm01 whenever if you are going to mm01 you select something like uh, this one and material type okay when you see now you see all these different views right this basic data one and two combined view is this one. Here you have this basic data view. Similarly, you have descriptions, dimensions. So each this, these attributes are logically split, uh, similar to how you have these different tabs uh, in this UI. So here you have different, uh, these kind of uh, sections. So you can create all the plants, sales related, storage locations, warehouse related, so all your plant related data you can maintain over here. You can add n number of plants over here. So this is a place where you can add the plants over here. Okay. You, so likewise, you see the, the, this actually, this is your equivalent to your MM01 or MM02 uh, UI only. There you have multiple tabs. Here you have multiple uh, sections. Uh, where the data is available. This is in collapse mode. You can expand this to see these particular uh, attributes. OK, so this is how you create uh, materials you, in MDG. This is a standard out of box of your application. Now, once user enter this, uh, let's say, for example, some basic data. And uh, material type is equal to finished product. OK, so some information and into some description here. Okay, so I'm just entered some data. Industry sector is mandatory. Let me enter something. Okay, so once you enter all this information, you can see in the down there are three buttons are there. Save, submit, cancel. Cancel means you are discarding this thing. You are discarding your changes. You are discarding this request. So it just cancels. Submit means you are done from your side and you are submitting this request. If any person is there in the workflow, the next approver, it will, the request will submit to that next person. Save is nothing but you are saving this data in a draft mode. That means you are not submitting. I wanted to, I need to maintain some more data, but what data I need to maintain, I am waiting for some inputs. So I need to, I, I can save my changes still here. I can close this request. I'll come back and again uh, uh, further enter the data. And finally, you can submit this request. Only when you submit this request, that is the time the data will be submitted or handed over to the next person. 
till then it will be with you in a draft mode so we will see more but these are the operations where you can actually use it for uh, your activities and at the top also you see there is a something called check when you enter check so if there are any important mandatory information something is missing you will see that uh, messages at the top error messages or something okay so there are some warning messages are there expand all means all these sections will be expanded collapse all means all the sections will be collapsed and also you can see here the drop down so the same thing you know that uh, there's some information is there in the down so you can actually select this it will take you to that particular section distribution change says so it will navigate it will take you to that section so likewise okay now even if i go to the customer ui application also it follows the same approach only the content will be different but uh, the ui theme will be same some of the actionable buttons in the down on the top left side you will see some buttons okay these are the different uh, data sections so the data will be spread across multiple sections so these things will be available okay so this is this we will come back to this because uh, we in our ui topic we will be discussing more okay I just wanted to show you how the mdg uis look like uh, for master data creation okay any questions till now fine so you guys are clear till now the concept set very high level what we are going to do how it what is mdg what we are going to do in mdg okay sakshay okay so others oh, no. uh, yeah we are good yes sakshay okay okay yes, great Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for the confirmation. Fine. So till here we have seen that uh, the overview, what is the MDG architecture and the deployment mode, sub versus code deployment, and uh, uh, then how the MDG UI look like, and uh, what are the how to enable the MDG uh, components and all those things at very high level, right? The pros and cons of each of these approaches. what are the different out of box master data that will be available uh, uh, as an out of box solution so those things we have seen over here till now okay so uh, after this in mdg uh, to start with our mdg always the data model topic data model is the one where we we will be starting our data model topic first topic because the data model what happens is it, it it talks about your staging area staging content how the tables will get generated staging tables will get generated so everything we we design our uh, the back end of the uh, staging tables using data model okay so once that is done then we will get into our ui applications workflows those are the one to start any other stuff first we should have this uh, uh, prerequisite the data model thing so in the data model we should know what is uh, 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 how to create the staging tables and all the relationships and everything and finally you don't go and create a table in mdg basically the staging tables are not created by the developers you do a configuration in the data model topic then once you activate that configuration automatically the tables will get generated in the back end so that means uh, what i'm trying to say here if you go to mdg img general settings data model so we do all the lot of configuration under this one edit data model okay so this complete data model topic so what are the configurations that you do under this data model and once you do all the required configuration and finally we will activate this particular data model then the required staging tables will get generated so when you are working with material master or business partner or customer or finance out of box objects 
you no need to create the data models because these are already available like uh, your mara masi how the tables are already available so for you when you are working on uh, mm or bp data model uh, uh, master data objects in mdg so these data models are already available in mdg so you no need to go and do any configurations or you no need to create anything but when if at all business is asking to add some custom attributes usually when you are working in mm or something right so business will come and say that okay i have this 10 custom attributes while creating the material these these attributes also has to be maintained so usually what we do we go to mara or marsi the respective table you enhance that uh, tables with the custom attributes and when someone is creating a material using mm01 or via idoc or something the data you will also capture the custom attributes into those tables now when it comes to mdg in mdg also if there are any custom attributes are there we need to extend the data model so the existing data models we need to extend when you are working on the standard objects but when you are working on custom objects custom object in the sense the business says that okay i wanted to govern a plant creation process then you need to go for a, a, a custom data model because there is no staging table there is no out of box solution for plant or employee master right so that's where you will design a new data model for your custom master okay so we will discuss both the scenarios only these are the two possible scenarios see mostly 80% you will end up extending the existing data models if you are working on material master you might be adding some custom attributes to your uh, uh, mm uh, models data model existing data model or if you are working on bp you will extend the bp data model because the data model is already out of box one you are not going to recreate something new that is already available so all you will be doing you will be just simply extending the existing data model that is fine it's a simple but with this you cannot learn how to create a new data model because it's already available you cannot learn that's why what we will do is as part of this course we will create our own data model we will take one scenario one custom object maybe plant or something like that okay we will take one use case and for that particular use case we will develop that data model so that while creating from scratch a data model you will understand that what is the you will we will be touching all the concepts of data model if i'm showing you a demo on how to extend a standard data model that will cover maybe very 20 30% of the concepts but if i'm creating a from a scratch for a brand new data model that will cover all the uh, concepts of your data model so that's why how we will divide this course is first let's take example of uh, use case for building a custom data model and for the same custom data model we will once that is developed we will create we will develop a custom ui applications also and we will develop the workflows and everything then parallelly i will show you how we can do the similar extension part for material or bp or customer or finance objects so we will take both parallelly side by side so is that clear to everyone yes sir clear okay. fine so now before getting into that actual data model concept there is one small uh, uh, let me show you first so data model if you go to edit data model this is the training system so you will find uh, multiple uh, data models over here like uh, s flight data model someone is practicing but the standard ones are these three this this is for your material master object so in the ui that i showed you material creation ui right if i enter this data and if i click submit or save button this particular data gets stored into the, the on the front end side you it looks like a data model but in the back end it has a staging tables it represents your complete material master staging area this represents your complete bp customer vendor staging area this represents your financial staging area so once i enter all the data on the ui and click save or submit then the data gets stored into these respective staging tables in the back end 
So you need to do all these configurations to complete your data model. Okay. So now this we will discuss. We will uh, uh, this is a completely technical topic. Uh, I would say mostly MDG is a 70 to 80 percent. It's a technical topic. Uh, very less on the functional side. OK, so before going to the data model, I wanted to cover one small topic, which is prerequisite for your data model. OK, flex versus reuse mode. So I think this topic will take up some time, probably uh, half an hour uh, discussion. I think probably for the first day, I feel that it will be too much for you, too many concepts or something. We will take a, we will give a logical break till here. Tomorrow, what we will do is we will start with uh, this. Uh, what is a flex versus reuse mode concept? And after that, we will start our uh, data model use case and we will see a demo in the system. We will create a from scratch one data model and we'll see that. We will basically we'll learn all the concepts of your data model. OK. So Akte, uh, are we also going to build the data model along with you? Uh, I will show you here uh, how to create a data model because while creating the data model, I will be explaining so many concepts over there. So we will uh, uh, while explaining that I will also parallelly create the data model and you can always refer during your uh, uh, time. Uh, OK, so you can go to these particular configurations and you can I'll give some use cases. You can actually build a equivalent data model for you so that uh, it will be kind of practice for you uh, how to create and while creating you also you will encounter some issues so that uh, we can discuss in the call so that uh, that will also helpful for others as well. But uh, in the in the uh, because if if you guys, if I'm waiting and if you guys are doing we will be losing lot of time. So in the call I will show you how to create the data model the steps and you can practice uh, during your uh, uh, in the offline. And if you have okay. any questions, you can come back in the next day. We will discuss. OK, so we are going to have access to this system, right? Yeah, I think uh, they shared a document how to access uh, the system. Or else okay. I'll uh, maybe if I'll talk to that uh, the support team. Uh, Zeran Tech support team uh, so that they'll help you out. They have a document, uh, OK? Uh, that you need to follow, but I'm not sure if you are uh, connected from your uh, uh, TCS, how you can actually uh, access that external network. Yeah, that's what our concern is like because we are attending training from the organization, so probably like uh, we might we may or may not have the access to the exact system. That's what uh, uh, let me update uh, uh, that uh, maybe if Mike or someone is available. I'll mm -hmm. talk to them, but if you have any POC from your side, also you can just talk to those folks. Okay, okay. And because uh, the logon pad, you need to install that, and uh, you need to add uh, in your uh, the settings also. Then mm -hmm. only you will be able to access that. This is my personal system, so I just accessed and uh, added to my uh, this one, and uh, I'm showing you that. Okay. We'll see. We'll work it out. I'll let me talk to them, uh, and you can also see from the coordinator uh, uh, how we can access that uh, from the external network. OK, OK. And uh, do you have like a day wise uh, schedule, like what all topics you're going to cover? I believe it is already shared uh, earlier. If not, uh, I'll share. OK, OK. And uh, one is, yeah, tell me please. Yeah, sorry. And one last question. Uh, can you please explain the topic of uh, hybrid uh, data model like uh, MDG and MDH, MDH? Yeah, uh, sure, sure. Just give me a minute. Yeah. So you are asking for that to repeat that MDG, MDC, all those things, right? Uh, yes, please. OK, sure, sure. No problem. OK, so as I said earlier, so assume that this is your the normal SAP uh, ECC or ERP system where it's an S4 or ECC system. OK, so now uh, to activate your MDG components, you will go to that business functions and you activate the respective business functions specific to MDG. 
so that your MDG related component will be enabled. That means when I say MDG related component, the complete stuff, whatever I showed you in this architecture, right? The respect to staging areas and the workflows, out of box workflows, out of box change requests, all these UI applications, everything will become active. Akshay, can you please share your screen? Oh, sorry, I'm not sharing. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm saying is here. So once you activate MDG related business functions, you will get to see all this. You can actually use, uh, you can configure and use this, uh, whatever these uh, uh, functions that we discussed. These ones in the architecture diagram we discussed, right? So all these things can be, you can uh, uh, configure and you can start using this. That means MD, MDG specific stuff. Now, I wanted to use uh, MDC consolidation. Basically, cons when you activate consolidation related business functions, so let me go to SF SFW5. So I showed you that uh, earlier. Uh, so there you have the different business functions, MDG business functions and uh, consolidation business functions. So when you activate consolidation business functions, again, as part of the consolidation, there are certain UI applications, certain processes that SAP introduced that will be enabled or that will be used only when you activate this consolidation business functions. What are those things? Like you can perform some consolidation activities. There are some mass apps are enabled, which are uh, very uh, performance uh, 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 I mean, optimized UI applications to perform the bulk updates. Those apps are available in your consolidation and comes as part of consolidation. You cannot use those things directly with MDG. You need to enable your MDC, then you can use the, whatever the features that are available on MDC, those features you can use this one on MDC. Similarly, for the DQM, no need to activate. Actually, when you activate your consolidation, it also enables the DQM related features. There is no separate uh, business functions for DQM. So when you activate the consolidation business functions, your DQM features, your consolidation features will be available. These are the add-ons, additional, optional, and uh, add-ons for your MDG. But the core MDG, this is what your 90% of the, uh, uh, the governance lies over here. These are SAP added as a kind of fancy terminology and they provided some fancy UIs. Of course, DQM has some uh, advantages. Consolidation also the majorly will be using the mass apps in the consolidation. Uh, is that clear? Anything you wanted to know? We will get into more details of each of these components. So first our focus will be this one, MDG. And once we are clear with all these MDG concepts, then we'll get into consolidation and DQM. Because this, this plays 90% of the course, and this is very 10%, I would say. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So any uh, other questions from anyone? If no questions, uh, we can close for today. And uh, let's uh, uh, connect back on tomorrow, same time. Okay. Thank you all. Have a great day. Okay. okay. Thank you all. Have a great day. Bye. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to visit our Vimeo page and follow for more upcoming videos. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below, and we will reply to them at the earliest.